to those who have dialed into the teleconference for standing by. Welcome to the open meeting of the Public Company Accounting Oversight Board. During the call, you'll be in listen-only mode. As a reminder, this meeting is being recorded and a recording is expected to be made available on the PCOB website. I would now like to turn to Acting Chairperson Desparty to formally convene the meeting. Good morning. This is an open meeting of the Public Company Accounting Oversight Board on September 28, 2021. Uh, we welcome those of you who have joined us by dialing into the teleconference today or who are listening to the recording of this meeting. Today, the board will consider a staff recommendation that we issue a second supplemental request for comment on our proposal regarding audits that involve, that involve accounting firms and individual accountants outside the accounting firm that issues the audit report. Before we proceed with the agenda, I will note for the record that board members Gasorn Gerada and Zietzman are participating in this meeting and we are able to hear one another. To present the staff's recommendation on the issuance of a supplemental request for comment, I will turn to our acting chief auditor, Barb Banage. Barb. Thank you, Dwayne. Good, good morning, Acting, Acting Chair Desparte and board members. The Office of the Chief Auditor is pleased to recommend that the board issue a supplemental request for comment on proposed amendments to the board's auditing standards. The proposed amendments relate to audits that involve accounting firms and individual accountants that are outside the firm issuing the auditor's report, which we refer to as other auditors. The board's first proposed amendments in this area in 2016 <clears throat> and has since refined the amendments in response to public comment. With the goal, ultimate goal of protecting investors, the proposed amendments are designed to strengthen the auditing standards that apply to an auditor's use of other auditors. Today's recommended supplemental request for comment would seek comments from the public on revisions to refine and improve the board's proposed amendments regarding an auditor's use of other auditors. Many companies have significant operations outside the country in which the auditor of their, of their financial statements or lead auditor is located. The roles of other auditors have become more significant as companies' global operations have grown. Among over 4,300 publicly listed companies that report segment assets or sales, outside the country or region of their lead auditor, those assets or sales comprise over a third of total assets and almost half of total sales. To audit the global operations of their clients, lead auditors typically assemble a team involving several other auditors. The work of these other auditors may account for a significant share of the audit. In some cases, a single audit may involve more than 20 accounting firms, and we have observed as many as 65 accounting firms involved in one audit. Working with other auditors can differ from working with people in the same firm. The lead auditor may encounter differences in business practices, market conditions, and cultural norms between the auditors in different parts of the world. In addition, accounting firms involved in the audit may have different systems of quality control. All of these factors can pose challenges in the coordination and communication between the lead auditor and other auditors. Without adequate supervision by the lead auditor to address these challenges, deficiencies in other auditors' work can and do result in deficient audits. Since the board's issuance of the 2016 proposal and a 2017 supplemental request for comment on that proposal, the staff have worked on various activities related to this project. First, we have analyzed and developed responses to public comments received on the proposed amendments. Second, we've continued to monitor audit firm practice in this area by reviewing their updated policies and procedures and by analyzing information gathered in our inspections and enforcement functions. Third, we've been closely monitoring the activities of other standard setters, including the International Auditing and Assurance Standards Board which is in the process of revising its standard for group audits. Revisions that are included in the recommended supplemental request for comment would retain and further advance the board's fundamental objectives in this project of one, increasing the lead auditor's involvement in 
and evaluation of the work of other auditors. Two, enhancing the ability of the lead auditor to prevent or detect deficiencies in the work of other auditors. And three, facilitating improvements in the quality of the other auditor's work. I would like to acknowledge that many people within the PCOB provided significant contributions to this project. I would like to express my sincere appreciation to Dima Andrianko, Lillian Sinoa, Stephanie Hunter, Hunter Jones, and Andrew Cleave from the Office of the Chief Auditor, the team that led this project. I would also like to thank our colleagues from other divisions for their significant contributions. In particular, Nayantara Hensel, Michael Gerbett, John Powers, and June Suk Lee in the Office of Economic and Risk Analysis, Drew Dropkin and Vince Meehan in the Office of General Counsel, and Dana Smith and Megan Healy in the Division of Registration and Inspection. I would also like to thank the staff in the Professional Practice Group and the Office of the Chief Accountant of the Securities and Exchange Commission for their support and timely assistance with this project. Now I'll turn the floor over to Lillian Sanoa, who will discuss the reasons for issuing this supplemental request for comment, and then to Stephanie Hunter, who will provide an overview of key revisions. Lillian? Thank you, Barb. Before I discuss the, the reasons for today's supplemental request for comment, I would like to say a few words about the 2016 proposal and 2017 supplemental request for comment, including the comments we received from the investor, preparer, academic, and auditor communities on those releases. To address concerns about the responsibilities of the lead auditor in supervising other auditors' work, in 2016, the board proposed amendments for public comment. The amendments are designed to enhance the lead auditor's oversight of other auditors' work. The amendments would improve existing auditing standards and impose a more uniform approach for the lead auditor's supervision of other auditors. Key features of the 2016 proposal, which today's supplemental request for comment would carry forward, include, first, rescind the legacy standard in this area, which is auditing standard number 1205, titled part of an audit performed by other independent auditors. As a result of rescinding the standard and adopting certain other proposed amendments, instead of being able to use the work and reports of other auditors under AS 1205, auditors would be required to one, supervise the other auditor under the board supervision requirements when assuming responsibility for other auditors' work, and two, when dividing responsibility for the audit with another audit firm, comply with specific requirements that apply to those arrangements. A second key feature of the 2016 proposal is that it provides additional direction to the lead auditor on how to apply the board supervision requirements. And third, the 2016 proposal enhances other existing requirements, which involve the engagement partner's determination of the sufficiency of the lead auditor's participation in the audit, the lead auditor's understanding of other auditors' knowledge, skill, and abilities, and compliance with ethics and independence requirements, and the engagement quality review procedures for audits involving other auditors. We received 23 comment letters on the 2016 proposal. Commenters were largely supportive of the proposed objective of improving the quality of audits involving other auditors. They also requested clarification of some matters and offered suggestions for further improvements to the amendments. In response to the comments, we issued a supplemental request for comment on proposed revisions to the amendments in September 2017. The 2017 Supplemental Request for Comment discussed significant comments received and presented revisions to the proposed amendments while leaving the overall proposed approach to the supervision of other auditors intact. In brief, the proposed revisions in the 2017 Supplemental Request for Comment included revisions that addressed the following three areas. 
One, it addressed the criteria for determining the sufficiency of an engagement partner's firm, par firm's participation in the audit. Two, it addressed information obtained by the lead auditor regarding other auditors' independence and knowledge, skill, and abilities. And three, it addressed documentation that the lead auditor is required to obtain from other auditors in an audit that involves multiple tiers of supervision. We received 22 comment letters on the 2017 supplemental request for comment. Commenters largely supported the proposed revisions and offered further input and suggestions for improvement. Now, let me turn to the reasons for issuing today's supplemental request for comment. Today, we are requesting comment on additional revisions to the proposed amendments to further strengthen the requirements. The proposed revisions included in today's releases, release are designed to address the following four areas. First, they are designed to take into account current practice while continuing to strengthen the responsibilities of a lead auditor. Second, they clarify certain proposed amendments that might have been confusing and avoid duplication of responsibilities. Third, they revise certain proposed definitions to reflect recent amendments to the board's auditing standards. And four, they enhance the readability and usability of the amended standards. I will now turn to Stephanie Hunter to provide an overview of today's key revisions. Stephanie? Thank you, Lillian. I will now discuss in more detail key revisions in today's release, which would clarify and improve the proposed amendment. These revisions would further carry out the policy approach in the 2016 proposal with respect to audit planning, audit supervision, and other areas of PCAOB auditing standards. The release includes a number of key revisions to be considered in the area of audit planning, AS 2101. First, the release would enhance the requirements related to the engagement partner's assessment of whether participation of his or her firm is sufficient to carry out the responsibilities of a lead auditor and to report as such on the company's financial statements. The proposed revisions would add a new consideration for the engagement partner to take into account, namely the extent of the firm's supervision of other auditors' work. Second, continuing in the area of audit planning, commoners generally agreed that proposed amendments relating to other auditors' compliance with independence and ethics requirements and other auditors' knowledge, skill, and ability would be important. Some commenters, however, raised questions over whether the information proposed to be obtained would achieve the intended purpose and result in enhancing audit quality. With that in mind, the release would modify proposed amendments relating to the other auditors' compliance with independence and ethics requirements and other auditors' knowledge, skill, and ability. Specifically, in the area of independence and ethics, instead of requiring the lead auditor to obtain an understanding of the other auditor's process for determining compliance, a revision would require the lead auditor to obtain from the other auditor and review a written affirmation as to whether the other auditor has policies and procedures that provide reasonable assurance that it maintains compliance with independence and ethics requirements. With respect to other auditors' knowledge, skill, and ability, we are proposing to replace the requirement that the lead auditor inquire about the training and assignment of all auditor personnel on the engagement team at the other auditor with the requirement that the lead auditor obtain a written affirmation from the other auditor that its personnel who participate on the engagement possess the knowledge, skill, and ability to perform the tasks on the audit assigned to them. This proposed revision, together with other proposed requirements, are designed to focus the lead auditor and other auditors on the importance of assigning qualified personnel 
at all levels of the audit engagement. Third, moving on to audit supervision under AS 1201, the board standard on supervision, the 2016 proposal would provide additional direction to the lead auditor regarding the review of other auditors' work. For example, the 2016 proposed amendment would cover obtaining and reviewing the other auditor's description of the nature, timing, and extent of its audit procedures. In light of the comments received, the 2017 supplemental request for comment revisions clarified that the necessary level of detail in the other auditor's documentation to be obtained and reviewed by the lead auditor should be determined by the lead auditor depending on the necessary extent of supervision of the other, other auditor's work. Going a step further, today's key revisions would clarify certain proposed supervisory procedures to address comments the board received, received that suggested the requirements were confusing and to avoid duplication of documentation requirements in other PCAOB standards. Fourth, in audits that involve multiple tiers of other auditors, the 2016 proposal would have limited a lead auditor's ability to direct the first other auditor to perform certain supervisory procedures with respect to the second other auditor. Some commenters expressed concern about the proposed requirement that in all circumstances, the communication of the scope of work, tolerable misstatement, and risks of material misstatement to the second other auditor be done by the lead auditor. They believe that a first other auditor often is better positioned to make such communication because it may understand operations and controls at a company location better than the lead auditor. In light of the comments received, today's revisions would allow the lead auditor to direct the first other auditor to communicate these items to the second other auditor under certain conditions. Key revisions in this area would also allow the lead auditor to seek assistance from a first other auditor in performing certain planning procedures relating to a second other auditor's qualifications and eliminate duplication of responsibilities between the lead auditor and other auditors. Lastly, in some audits, auditors other than the lead auditor perform audit procedures on the financial statement of a company's investees. For example, for certain investments accounted for by the company under the equity method. In distinguishing the requirements for these types of situations where the investee's financial statements are audited by another accounting firm from the requirements for audits involving other auditors or referred to auditors. Referred to auditors being those auditors involved when the lead auditor divides responsibility for the audit. We are proposing to amend the board's audit evidence standard, Appendix B of AS 1105. Revisions in this standard include providing a more descriptive term, invest the auditor, and certain other clarifying edits. I will now turn the floor back over to Lillian for the staff's recommendation. Thank you, Stephanie. In closing, the staff is recommending that the board issue for public comment a further supplemental request for comment on revisions to amendments to PCOB auditing standards concerning an auditor's use of the work of other auditors. Thank you very much, and we look forward to any questions you might have. Thank you, Lillian. Thank you, Barb. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, at this time, my fellow board members and I will have an opportunity to make a statement or to ask questions to the staff. We will proceed in the order of seniority and I will begin. I am pleased to support the recommendation before us today. As companies continue to expand their operations across the globe, the extent and complexity of audits involving multiple audit firms has only increased. In 2020, multiple auditors were used in 30% of all issuer audits, and nearly 30% of those engagements had five or more separate audit firms involved. As Barb mentioned, working across multiple audit firms can increase the risks of lack of coordination and miscommunication, which can lead to misunderstandings about the nature, timing, and extent of the work of other auditors, 
and therefore result in reduced audit quality. While we have seen some improvement in recent years in the quality of work performed by other auditors, we continue to identify deficiencies. Deficiencies the lead auditor did not identify or did not address. Such findings indicate investor protection can be further enhanced by increasing the required involvement of lead auditors in planning and supervising the work of other auditors. It is therefore imperative that we drive to finish this important project. The changes to our existing standards set forth in today's proposal are designed to better ensure that the lead auditor plays a central role in determining the scope of audit procedures and in coordinating and supervising effective execution of those procedures by other audit firms on the engagement. These proposed changes, as you have heard, incorporate our consideration of comments that we received in prior proposals released in 2016 and 2017, along with stakeholder input and the results of our oversight activities since then. Today, we are seeking additional comments in certain areas, uh, as you've heard, uh, such as in how a lead auditor assesses the sufficiency of its participation in the group audit, or assesses the knowledge, skill, and ability, or the independence of other auditors. Another example, as you've heard, of where we are seeking comments in, is in how supervision should be handled in audits involving multiple tiers of other auditors. We welcome stakeholder feedback on these matters or on any other aspect of the proposed amendments. Such input will be invaluable to us as we consider the potential changes in our standards for, to further drive improved audit quality and investor protection. I would like to recognize and thank all those at the PCAOB who have contributed to this effort. And this has been over many years, including the staff in our offices of the chief auditor, economic and risk analysis, general counsel, and in our division of registration and inspections. I would like to especially recognize today those individuals from the Office of the Chief Auditor currently on the project team. You've heard from some of them today. Barb Vanage, Lillian Sanoa, Stephanie Hunter, Dima Andrienko, Hunter Jones, and Andrew Cleve. Finally, I would also like to thank the SEC staff for their support and assistance. I will now turn to board members Gasser and Gerada and Zietzman for any statements that they may wish to make. Uh, Rebecca, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Duane. I am pleased to support this supplemental request for comment. Before I discuss the request for comment itself, I'd like to thank all of the members of the PCOB staff who have worked so hard to get us to this point particularly the staff of the Office of the Chief Auditor, the Office of Economic and Risk Analysis, and the Office of the General Counsel. This is an important amendment and proposed standard, and I thank you for carefully and thoughtfully considering the comments that we have previously received, as well as the PCOB's experience and observations in inspecting audits involving other auditors. I'd like to specifically thank Barb, Lillian, and Stephanie for presenting the recommendation today. When the PCOB was formed in 2003, the board adopted Section 543 of the AICPA Statement on Auditing Standards Number 1. This rule was later renumbered in the PCOB's auditing standards as AS 1205, entitled Part of Audit Performed by Other Independent Auditors. The Section 543 wasn't new at the time that the board adopted it in 2003. It was codified by the AICPA in the early 70s. Similarly, the standard that would be renumbered as AS 1201, Supervision of Audit Engagement, was adopted in 2010. Needless to say, business and audits have become much more global since 2003 or 2010 and dramatically more so since the early 70s. Although there have been a few amendments to these rules along the way, it is time for comprehensive amendments to modernize our standard to reflect the changed business and auditing environment. In 2020, 69% of audits of Fortune 500 companies used other auditors, and 57% of audits of large accelerated filers used other auditors. Often on large company audits, many other auditors are involved. The use of other auditors is now common practice, and other auditors often audit important aspects of the issuer's business. At the same time that businesses have become more global, we've learned new and better practices for conducting audits across the world involving other auditors. 
These improved practices are critically important because the use of other auditors can present substantial risk. Using other auditors can create communication challenges because of geographic separation, language barriers, differing auditing practices adopted by other firms, and differing levels of understandings of the companies being audited and the PCOB auditing standards. Each of these difficulties can result in miscommunications and misunderstandings about the risk of material misstatement and the work being performed to address those risks. However, the lead auditor ultimately bears the responsibility for the underlying audit, and therefore it is important to revise our standard to update and enhance the lead auditor's responsibilities accordingly. The rule amendment seeks to strengthen the requirements of the auditors through a number of ways of um, was just described, including addressing any potential misunderstandings and thereby strengthen audit quality. As we've seen, the use of other auditors is pervasive and sometimes risky, so this is a key area for protecting investors. I'm pleased that today we are moving closer to the adoption of a new and amended standard to address these issues, and I encourage the new board and the Securities and Exchange Commission to move forward promptly with these standards. Updating the standard is important to advancing audit quality and represents the type of crucial work that is core to the PCOB fulfilling its statutory mandate and should remain a top priority for the incoming board. I also encourage the public to comment on today's supplemental request for comment. Your input is crucially important. Finally, I would like to acknowledge that today will be my last meeting as a board member. It has been an honor to serve in this role and I wanna thank the PCOB staff for your efforts to protect investors. On a personal note, I want to extend my heartfelt thanks to Rebecca Mealy, who served as my advisor during my first year as a board member, Jill Bucock, who has been my executive assistant throughout, and a special thank you to Martha Kidd, who has been my counsel and advisor also throughout my term. I will forever be grateful for your assistance, advice, support, and importantly, friendship. Thank you also to my fellow board members. I am proud to have served alongside of you. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. Megan, I'll turn the floor to you now. Thank you, Duane. Um, I too am very pleased to support the staff's recommendation that the board issue a further supplemental request for comment on proposed amendments related to the auditor's supervision of other auditors. As speakers today have already noted, this project was first proposed several years ago, after which the board issued a supplemental request for comment on certain revisions to the proposal. Today's release, as you've heard, seeks further comment on targeted revisions that refine and clarify the amendments the board previously proposed. This is a significant project involving a substantial update of the PCOB standard in, standards in a very important area. I believe the proposed amendments, if adopted, will improve how auditors plan and supervise audits that involve other auditors, which in turn will serve to enhance audit quality and protect the interests of investors and serve the public interest. I join my fellow board members in expressing appreciation for the hard work of staff in preparing the proposed amendments that the board is considering today. I would like to add my thanks to the staff in the Office of the Chief Auditor, as well as in the Office of Economic and Risk Analysis, Division of Registration and Inspections, the Division of Enforcement and Investigations, and the Office of the General Counsel. I would especially like to thank the OCA team, Barb, Dima, Lillian, Hunter, Stephanie, and Andrew, I would like to call out to Hunter for helping me prepare for today's meeting. I would also like to thank the SEC staff for their support in advancing this project. Um, I would like to commend our Office of the Chief Auditor also for their engagement with our staff in the Division of Registrations and Inspections. Our observations from targeted inspections of multi-location audits and reviews of firm methodologies and practice aids, as well as observations from other inspections and from our enforcement program, have helped to inform the decisions made in this project. Information about what we are seeing in practice has benefited our, our understanding of the challenges and diverse range of facts and circumstances that can arise in audits involving other auditors. Even in the time since the initial proposal on this project, there has been increasing globalization and significant developments in technology, which affect not only financial reporting and related controls, but also how audits are being performed. I'm therefore pleased that the board is using this supplemental request to provide one more opportunity for stakeholders to provide their comments. The pace of change and the related effects on financial reporting and performance of audits will only accelerate going forward. There are a few aspects of the proposed amendments that I would like to briefly highlight. First of all, usability. The proposed amendments have been reorganized so that the important provisions that were previously included in an appendix to the planning and supervision standards 
have now been integrated into the bodies of those standards. This approach enables the amendments to be read in the context of the more general and overarching requirements to which they pertain. This change, without by itself changing the meaning of the amendments, should make these, the standards easier to follow and implement. I therefore believe that this approach will make the board's auditing standards more usable. Secondly, clarity. Many of the revisions to the proposed amendments in today's release clarify the proposed requirements um, and the accompanying release includes useful background discussion. Revisions to the proposed amendments, such as those pertaining to audits that involve multiple tiers of other auditors, and therefore layers of planning and supervision, attempt to respond to what we heard from commenters, as well as what we have learned through our oversight activities about the realities of current practice. Finally, scalability. In revising its standards, the board is careful to take into account the need for scalability, including that its standards will be applied to audits of differing sizes and complexity, and by firms with diverse natures and circumstances. In order to address scalability, the proposed amendments are therefore designed as risk-based and intended to be adapted based on facts and circumstances. I encourage commenters to read the proposed amendments and the related discussion in the accompanying release and provide input on the aspects I have highlighted. While of course it's not possible to predict the future, I also encourage commenters to consider how the proposed amendments might be applied and as appropriate adapted to the evolving environment and to the diverse facts and circumstances that are encountered today and that might be encountered going forward. I think it's particularly important for our staff and the board to hear about situations where the proposed requirements might pose particular practical or other challenges. This kind of commentary enables the board to consider whether the whether revisions might be necessary to further clarify or explain requirements so that they can achieve their intended outcomes, which in turn should facilitate more effective and consistent implementation by auditors. In this way, I believe that our standards will be more effective in enhancing audit quality and protecting the interests of investors. In closing, let me add that although I will no longer be on the board when the comment letters are submitted on this request for comment, I look forward to observing the continued progress and I do hope that the next board will support bringing this important initiative to completion. And then finally, similar to Rebecca, this is my last open meeting as a, as a PCOB board member. I'm honored to have had the opportunity to serve at the PCOB initially as its chief auditor and for the past 10 months as a board member. Thank you to the staff and to my fellow board members for what we have accomplished during my tenure. There is a lot to be proud of. I wish the next board and the staff the best of luck and success as they continue to perform important work in line with the PCOB's mission to protect the interests of investors and further the public interest. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. Unless there is any further discussion from the board, uh, I would ask that we uh, move to a vote. All in favor of approving the recommendation, if you could please say yes. 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 All right, hearing uh, all uh, three of us say yes, uh, the recommendation is approved. Uh, so thank you everyone for that. Um, as you have heard before we close, as you've heard from both Rebecca and Megan, this is their last open board meeting. And I would like to uh, take a moment here to formally recognize each of you for your dedicated service to the PCAOB. Uh, you know, leveraging your unique expertise and experiences, you have each helped advance important policy initiatives for us and helped us drive continuous improvement in our oversight activities and deliverables. On a personal level, I have been privileged to work with each of you. I've learned much from each of you. Uh, you have helped uh, you share your insights, you've challenged me to consider matters from alternative perspectives, and I am grateful for the support that you have given me, particularly these past several months. So on behalf of all of us, thank you for your leadership and for all that you've contributed to help the board and the organization advance the PCOB's very important mission of investor protection. With that, that concludes the PCAOB's open meeting for today. As there is no further business, this meeting is now adjourned. Thank you for your participation. You may now disconnect from the teleconference.